We live in a diverse community where Asian Americans are a key part of who we are, yet many will tell you there is still an ongoing struggle. In fact, when it comes to being Asian in America, many feel they are invisible. On this Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, our exclusive report is David Ono joins us live from Beverly Hills on the gold carpet. Hi, David. We need to make space Hi, Ellen. Hi, Colleen. Yes, I'm in here in Beverly Hills uh, at this restaurant called Heritage. It's owned by the On family, a famous, a very famous restaurant family here in Southern California. And this is a big event that they are planning for right now. It's going to be kicking off in a couple of hours. It's put on by an organization called Gold House. That's the reference to the gold carpet that's right outside, where some of the most powerful, some of the most famous Asians in the world will be arriving here tonight. And that's not an exaggeration. So as we get to the end of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, it's a perfect place and time to examine where Asians are in American society right now. And a lot of it has to do with how are they, they are portrayed in Hollywood. When Lucy Liu received her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame earlier this month, it was a celebration. It happened on the first day of Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month. An Asian American actress gets her due, but... There are about 2,400 stars in the Walk of Fame, and the number going to Asians, including Lou, 12. All minority groups are underrepresented, but Asians are the farthest behind with only one half of 1%. It's a sliver so small, it's almost invisible, as many would say Asian opportunities historically have been in Hollywood. It also explains a quiet yet deep-set anger within Hollywood's Asian community. It's not about the lack of stars. It's about the lack of roles, plot lines, and the honest portrayal of authentic Asian Americans. My goal in wanting to make that movie was simply that I just loved the book. Janet Yang is a legendary producer. She has had many hits, and one of her biggest was 1993's Joy Luck Club. I was raised the Chinese way. Groundbreaking because it portrayed Asian Americans authentically, and people loved it. Proof an Asian story can be mainstream and make money. But it was an aberration, not a renaissance. Hollywood didn't change until... That became extremely uh, apparent at the 2016 Oscars. That was the year, if you may recall, where Oscars So White became a meme where there were jokes against Asians. It was a sad irony. In an Oscar show focused on inclusion, the only representation Asians had was a gag based on a stereotype. And like this headline in the New York Times, it didn't go unnoticed. We all felt equally uh, agitated and incensed, and we decided we really need to do something about it. Meetings would follow. Yang found herself a seat on the governing board of the Oscars, and a new attitude began to emerge. Every time I bring them up, they change the subject. Maybe his parents are poor and he has to send them money. 25 years after Joy Luck Club, crazy rich Asians burst onto the scene, but this time, more are coming. I can tell you're a little... I hope you get malaria and yourself to death. We are behind. Um, that said, there's never been a better time to be an Asian working in Hollywood. Actor Daniel Day Kim has fought this fight for years and says there's a deeper meaning in it all. It's a fight about acceptance, not just in Hollywood, but in mainstream America. We're part of the fabric of this country. It's important that we, that we uh, have stories like this to tell that show that we are not other. We are not foreigners. We are, we are also part of this country and its history. Bing Chen is one of the founders of an organization called Gold House. He calls it a collective of high-achieving Asians from all sectors of society, including Hollywood. Gold House is powerful Asians unifying to create change. In order to really thrive in society, you can't rely on others first. You have to rely on your own community to support each other and then grow from there. They know that Asians are often painted as model employees, but not model leaders. That fallacy is part of why Asians make up only 3.7% of executive board seats at Fortune 500 companies. When you don't have a seat at the table, you often just build your own table. So they're creating their own companies with great success. Pinterest, half Asian founder. Snapchat, one of the founders is Filipino. Twitch, founders are Asian, right? Hulu, founder is Asian. Um, YouTube, founder is Asian. But what does all this have to do with Hollywood? Stereotypes. They are limiting and dishonest and unfair. Asians are great leaders, not just workers. They are American and deserve every right that comes with that. 
More visibility and authentic roles and stories in Hollywood help tear down these stereotypes and lead to better understanding. I think it leaves a very, very deep and subconscious impression on how you see the world. We had an African-American man on TV and film long before we did in the actual Oval Office. So I would assume supporter Veronica Miracle will join me out here on the gold carpet. She'll start doing some of the interviews as well as uh, we start seeing some not only famous Asians, but powerful Asians. In fact, the founder of YouTube is said to be flying in this evening with a lot of his friends to take part in this event tonight. So we hope you join us on KDOC TV at 7 o'clock. We'll have some live interviews. And at 11 o'clock, Veronica will have a full wrap up of all the events going on here tonight. Reporting just outside outside of Beverly Hills. David Ono, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. All right, looks like a great event, David. Thank you very much for that live report. All right, well,